You know, in a time when consumers are more removed from food production than ever before, these videos really do deliver facts directly from the source, and that's our farmers and ranchers and other beef experts. With that said, joining us now to talk more about that process is Buck Werbine, the chair of NCBA's Federation Division. And Buck, first thing out of the shoot, let's go ahead and explain for folks at home why this video series is so important to beef producers like you. Well, the, the video series, Real Facts About Real Beef, uh, debunks common beef myths from experts like Dr. Frank Mitlerner, uh, the climatologist from Cal Davis, uh, University of Cal Davis, who debunks the idea that um, cattle are a big source of greenhouse gas. And if you haven't heard him, man, he's just the greatest spokesman because he's got it all down. And he really, it's not like he's, uh, he's not just an apologist for the beef industry. He explains what cattle do contribute and how they don't contribute. So it's really interesting. Everybody ought to hear it. And, uh, you know, if you check out our Beef is What's for Dinner on YouTube, uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of these little videos, and they're short, and they're pithy, and 15 to 30 seconds. And uh, I think a lot of people are like I was. They believed in the checkoff. They supported it, didn't pay any attention to it, didn't know much. And uh, these videos are a quick and easy way to see something that the checkoff is, is doing for them that's real. And it's not just the videos. Uh, we got social media going out, you know, that reaches so many people and debunking myths and uh, even placing editorials into major publications. There was a New York Times uh, op-ed about cattle and greenhouse, and Dr. Mitlerner had an op-ed to, to debunk that, and of course they wouldn't run it. And finally, uh, the team found a spot in uh, a San Francisco paper, interestingly enough, to get it out there in a big newspaper. So. Uh, we're educating the, the consumer and, and also influencers, bloggers and chefs and so forth. So uh, it, it's, it's good to clear up those things and make people, you know, make sure they're comfortable buying our product. Well said. Now, were there a couple of specific topics or even myths, if you will, that were top of the list to get debunked? Well, I mentioned the greenhouse gas. That's a big one that people are concerned about because it gets used by the anti-beef people so much. Um, and then also the idea that all the corn that gets fed to cattle, to livestock, could be eaten by humans. And so, you know, understanding all the land that we use that wouldn't grow crops that can be eaten by humans is, is helpful for people to understand, too. You know, it's about our consumers. We know our consumers want to eat our product. It's about them feeling comfortable and, and uh, confident in doing it, that they're not harming the environment, which, of course, they're not. Hey, Buck, what kind of reaction have you heard from these videos so far? Well, one of the cool things that uh, Checkoff Funded Research does is, is gives a, a real good idea of how our consumers and our customers are responding to things like this. You know, old guys like me, I, I, I get what social media is. I just don't understand how it works, and I'm not very good at it. But through that, we can find out through, uh, you know, people looking at our information and so forth that it's reaching a lot of people. And I think that... Uh, that research is showing that um, there's a lot of confidence and people are feeling positive about beef and beef production. And of course, it's not just the experts, it's producers also that are on there. And, and I think it always helps to, you know, you may, be, you may not be able to touch them and poke them because you're seeing a video, but you can see people that are actually out there doing and that always helps to, to put a face with, with what you're looking at. And so I think the um, very positive feelings and that has really uh, served us well in this COVID time with lockdowns and all that, where people were not able to go out to eat and we're having to cook at home. And so all the information we've got, recipes and all that, uh, really, really did well, served us well in the beef producer well. And so people were able to get those recipes and once again, have a positive feeling about beef. Let's go ahead now and remind folks at home that you actually serve as the chair of the Federation of State Beef Councils. Could you explain for us what the purpose of the Federation is? Yeah, you bet. Uh, this has been an honor for me to be vice chair last year and chair this year. And uh, the Federation, of course, is the Federation of State Beef Councils. There's 46, 7, whatever it is, uh, active state beef councils in the United States. They all collect the checkoff. 
And then, uh, of course, 50 cents of every dollar goes to the Cattlemen's Beef Board. And then the other 50 cents stays at the state. And so uh, the federation is all those states joining together. And they all pay some money in to help support it. And the bigger cattle states, like in the center of the country, uh, usually give part of their budget besides what they have to pay to be part of the federation to support it. And the federation then is able to enhance the work that any state beef council could not do by itself. But when you join forces, then you can really amplify that effort and, uh, and reach a lot of people. You know, one of our ideas is put the money where the people are. Well, Nebraska's got four and a half times as many cattle as people. So, you know, we don't spend a lot of money here, but we, but we send money to states like New York and, and California and, and uh, Florida where the people are. And so the Federation is a good way to, to uh, help us um, really join forces and get a lot done. Another Absolutely. thing that they do is uh, issues management. So we've got a team that are watching the issues and on social media. So when they see something come up that uh, catches their eye, they can monitor that. And that gives us an idea if it's something that this is real and we need to respond to it, or this is very small, people really aren't paying attention. Maybe somebody's trying to make a deal, something out of nothing, and we know when to respond and when not to. And so the message can go out to all of our producers. So whatever method that they may have that they can put out uh, the information and, and get the story set straight. So that's really, that's really good. We've got, uh, you know, a lot of beef, beef's good positive image uh, that benefit the states. And uh, we've got nutrition and diet, dietitians and, and whatnot that, that we influence through this. And, and we got a lot of tremendous support from the nutrition influence community. Well, Buck, before we let you go, Give us another example of how the Federation and State Beef Council work to reach consumers and grow demand for beef. A really good example would be the early development webinar that uh, they're even looking at what beef can do for a small child in the first six months of life. So that's something that can change habits and influence people, you know, for their entire life. And so uh, that, that'd be a really good example of it uh, that's a great resource provided by the Federation. All right, Buck, as always, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule there in Nebraska to talk about this very important topic. Pleasure's mine.